Hello, today I'm going to show you the analysis and relaunch plan for the Dove's Real Beauty campaign. Over the presentation, we will see the campaign overview, the situation analysis where we're going to see the strengths, the opportunities, the threats and the weaknesses that the brands have been facing over the last couple of years, the objectives, the strategic approach, the tactics, the action and the contract plan as well. Let's start with the campaign overview. The campaign was developed by Dove to show that they are a brand that not just care about beauty, they also care about consumer needs, especially when back in the early 2000s, brands like Victoria's Secret and other players in the industry just embraced a typical stereotype of beauty. Dove just decided to adopt a reality-based campaign using regular girls in their advertisement in order to just in case of confidence and different kind of beauty at the moment. That reaffirms that Dove is diverse, effective, accessible and affordable, which is literally what they look into reflecting their products. The marketing manager at that moment realized that it was necessary to embrace different kind of beauties in order to success into that market because some different advertisements were just at the moment driving and driving into that kind of stereotypical beauty which was not uh, a thing that Dove wants to follow at the moment. In 2004, Dove launched the first phase of the campaign to combat the problems that they were seeing in their global study, especially about insecurities and lack of woman confidence. They roll out a series of advertisements featuring women whose appearance are outside of the stereotypical norms of beauty. They literally recruit women of the streets, coffee shops, grocery stores, etc. Given that they are looking for that diversity to put into the advertisements, they literally go to magazines, billboards, bus stops and everything like that and they just put the picture of the person and try to uh, embrace that uh, induction response. The concepts and tactics were good at first, given the purpose of the campaign. Uh, however, according to the web portal Marketing Week, the interaction was inducted and just 40% of the consumers that interact with the campaign doesn't give the hopeless answer, even when they're looking or expected to see more diversity and more inclusive into their advertisements. The concept was disruptive and they have a really good impact across the board. The second phase of the campaign was launched in 2005 and they showed different kind of women and embraced their real beauty and real curves, especially regarding with their Dove's firming lotion. They have different advertisements, different free press even, and they show that diversity that their brand looking for it. Show different kind of women, different kind of physics and everything to embrace that confidence and to show that there are different kind of beauties, not just the thin one. At this point, probably you're still asking, what was the failure, especially after all of that success with the creative concept back then? According to Business Insider, these are some of the most highlighted reasons of Dove's failure campaign. Back in 2017, the brands decided to go out with some specific digital ads across the board. A black woman was showing there with a brown tashir first and then she removes the shirt to reveal a white woman and that was highly perceived as a racist and full non-inclusive ad. Then with all of the ads and deployment that they decide to do over the different kind of advertisements that they do back then, um, some of the public and stakeholders start to perceive the brands as uh, consumerism and sexualization embracement, especially for women. And since they decided to go out with the real beauty concept across the board with all of the products, mostly of the products, what's like a uh, framework about that specific concept. So there were no specific clarity about the actual products or the ads that they are trying to sell. So the same concept was perceived for a long, long time. So Sometimes there was some lack of consistent in terms of messaging and in terms of benefits that the consumers start to perceive about the brand. Now we're going to see the situation analysis. Now I want to show you the SWOT analysis. 
where we're gonna see Dove's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. In terms of strengths, we can highlight the product design and powerful marketing concept. Since the brands combines clean and hydration in all of their products, and they have been developed a really good concept for a while to differentiate into the marketplace. Also, we can see that the Dove is really powerful in terms of sales revenue, since the campaign jumped from 2.5 billion USD to 4 billion USD in the first 10 years, according to Statista. Then we will see the weaknesses. Um, the brand have been emphasized in mostly in body shapes instead of all of kind of diversity, which have been shown that the brand have been focused in just body shapes. So according to Comparably, they have been perceived a non-innovative and non-full inclusive one since they just have been focused in the body especially. And that have been consequence in the sentimental about the brand since now all of the consumer don't just trust in them and just perceive that, okay, Dove is a brand that just focus in body shapes and they don't embrace all of different kind of beauty in terms of skins, in terms of colors, in terms of everything across the, um, across the world. Then we can see the opportunities and threats. In terms of opportunities, Dove have a really good ones about to empowering minorities and engage with diversity population, according to McKinsey in 2020. Um, also, they are the most preferred soap bars in the US and are Unilever's best selling products. The consumers are looking right now to build long term relations with the brands and they feel identified. So that's a really good opportunity for Dove to create that uh, loyalty with their consumers now to not just losing over the time and to maintaining. However, there are some threats that the brands needs to be aware of. The increase of competition is high and brands are doing a specific marketing for the products and sometimes with the marketing that Dove tends to do, it perceives that, okay, this is a brand that just includes under the same concept and on this, under the same ads, the different kind of products that they have. So it's difficult to differentiate sometimes, and especially when the brands are doing a specific marketing for the different product portfolio that they have. Also, the consumer goods brands connecting with more consumers through social media. So it's a really, really necessary thing that Dove start to do more presence in social or in digital, especially when other brands are doing it right now. Consider the situation analysis. Now I would like to show you the proposed objectives. The proposed objectives have been developed by the SMART methodology and considers base philosophy and mission as well. The first one is about increased consumers interaction for Dove's Instagram and Facebook by 50% within 12 months. The second one is receive 1.5 million visitors per month from Google and Bing organic campaign results by the end of the year. And the third one is reduce bounce rate below 40% for all traffic source within 12 months. These three objectives are aligned with the mission of Dove to work to make beauty a source of confidence and positive and body image and will help to show them are like a diversity and inclusive brand and increase their awareness and engagement with the consumers as well. Now I want to show you the proposed strategy. This is Megan Rose, a 33 year old optimistic woman who lives in London with her husband and her kids. She is an emotional person who guides herself by her perception. She works out sometimes over the week likes to eat healthy and are always looking to be productive and stay up top of the things. Some of her frustrations are about her hectic and busy lifestyle, which doesn't help much in her beauty routine. She always looking to have productive routines and quit eating junk food, despite how challenging she finds it. Some of the brands she likes include Primark, Zara, Dove and Tesco, and she always preferred the online and social media channels instead of the traditional ones. The strategic approach will be developed through the following factors and will be a consumer engagement strategy. According to Dove's website, 
just 70% of women don't feel represented in media, and 40% of women worldwide describe themselves as beautiful. The social media growth and boom over the last several years, and the fact that consumers are always looking to interact with the brands through these channels are important reasons for Dove to be part of the community as well. Given that Dove is a really powerful brand that has been creating a stronger message over the last decade, the use of available resources and the messages around diversity and inclusion will be definitely powerful tools to embrace the brand opportunities to minimize the threats and weaknesses. Consider the situation analysis, the objectives and the strategic approach. Now I want to show you the proposed tactics for Dove's relaunch campaign. Here we can see a quick overview of the tactics and how they are well connected with each objective. The first one is about social media marketing, where we will be using Facebook and Instagram mainly, including digital ads, influencer marketing and giveaways to achieve the first objective. Then the second one, we will be optimizing the website to be on top of searchers like Google, Bing and Yahoo. This will be making through keyword planners and other useful Google tools that we can see on the slide. And to achieve the third one, we will be doing content marketing, especially to engage with consumers and reduce the bounce rate by the end of the year. In terms of social media marketing, the Instagram feed will be transformed to promote self-confident messages and positive lifestyle. Some hashtags like Define by myself and stay real with Dove will be part of the campaign in order to embrace brand's philosophy and increase the awareness and engagement. The consumers will be encouraged to use the hashtag to have a chance to win a basket of Dove products. Some of the proposed themes that will be developed through social media includes beauty that inspires confidence instead of anxiety and the digital disruption to embrace reality versus online beauty. Influencers like Grow with Joe and Ashley Rose are potential options to be part of the campaign, especially to spread the messages and increase the consumer's interaction with the brand. Here we can see some of the examples that will be included in the social media post when we embrace the uniqueness and the different kind of beauties according to the tactics proposed previously. For web optimization, we will be creating internal and output links to improve performance of the different pages. The website will be connecting with Google Analytics to be able to monitor the performance and adjust if it's necessary. The website will be optimized with keywords like real beauty, soft, body care, skin care, confidence, etc. And some long terms like discover a world of beauty and confidence is your most powerful feature will be included as well. Also, UTM sources will be included into the size to do a proper tracker. Tools like Website Grader will be used to ensure that the site is mobile friendly and is doing well in terms of speed and secure. About content marketing, some relevant topics like digital or distortion, myth or reality, and five real tips to embrace your confidence will be included into the site. The content should focus in blogs, videos, infographics, and one pagers, since those are more likely to engage with consumers. Now we have a quick overview of the action plan. Here we can see an overview of the project plan when we'll see the different tasks and times that we we'll propose for it. The first one is the planning and authorization stage, then the social media marketing, and finally the SEO and content marketing. Some of the actions will be working in a monthly basis, and other ones would be doing and focusing, especially in this first stage of the campaign, all of the creative ones, teams development, everything like that, to be now and to planning accordingly the things that we need to do across the board. Finally, I would like to show you the control stage. The cost displayed here is based on current agency fees, digital investment and average company rates. Here we can see all of the tasks allocated, content marketing development, social media marketing, Google AdWords and SEO setup and management. The variety of effective tools used here makes the total estimated cost financially feasible. Finally, we have the KPIs that will help with the performance of the tactics. In social media marketing, we will be measuring the engagement rate, the number of shares, the number of use of the hashtags, and growth rate numbers too. Tools like Facebook Campaign Manager, Sprout Social, and Instagram for Business will be useful here. 
For web optimization, we will be using Google Analytics, Google Search Console, and Google Ads Planner to track the number of visits, the cost per click, the click-through rate, and the average time spent on page. For content marketing, we will be tracking the average time spent on page as well, the monthly bounce rate, and the traffic sources. Key data sources like WordPress, Website Grader, and Nailpatel will be using here. Thank you for your time. I'm highly confident that this relaunch will help Adobe to engage more with consumers and be perceived again as a top inclusive and diverse brands in the marketplace. Thanks!